Over the last month, I have been drawing on Android, specifically the Galaxy Tab A 9.7 with S Pen. This is my first experience ever drawing on an Android tablet, so there's a lot to cover. I think for the sake of this video, I'm going to break it into two chunks. The first is going to be the review of this Galaxy Tab A, and the second is going to be a video dedicated to some of the software and apps that are available for Android. And as always, I'm going to be looking at this from the point of view of an artist. What's it like to draw on one of these things? What's it like to illustrate on one of these things? How does it compete with something like the iPad Pro or some kind of desktop drawing tablet. And hopefully when all is said and done between these two videos, you'll know enough about Android to go out and make a decision as to whether this is a good fit for you or not. One thing that really stands out when you're looking at Android hardware is how much cheaper it is than iPads. You can get one of these tablets for about half the price than the price of an iPad Pro. Not only that, but if you factor in something like an Apple Pencil, that's an extra hundred dollars on top of your purchase, whereas most of these tablets that have a pen capability already come come with pens. Which brings me to another point, not all Android tablets are good for drawing on. Most Android tablet screens don't have digitizers that support active pens. Don't know what I just said? No worries, I'm about to explain it. Basically, if you want a good stylus, a stylus that's accurate, maybe gives you some pressure sensitivity, the tablet screen needs to be designed with sensors in it in order to know that there is a pen there and, and register all of those things. Most Android tablets don't include those sensors because really most people don't need them and it adds quite a bit to the cost of these tablets. On average, a tablet with a digitizer in it is probably gonna run you about $100 more than just a standard Android tablet off the shelf. And there are a lot of Android tablets on that shelf. When I started this out, I spent a lot of time on the web just trying to research and find out what tablets work with an active stylus, what tablets don't. Not like there's a website out there you can go to and just see a big list of all the Android tablets that have pen support. Until now! Okay, I got way too excited there. Of course, I had to make the website myself, which means I may have missed one or two or your favorite Android tablet. Uh, so if I did, you know, let me know. Also, since I can't review each and every Android tablet that is out there, I have included links on this website to, you know, other people's reviews or other people testing it out with the pen and that sort of thing. So if you bump into any resources like that that I can post on the site and help people out, let me know about that too. Basically, I'm looking for people who are actually trying to test the stylus, whether they're artists or not. I'm trying to avoid all those millions of videos out there that are just a nerd scribbling on the screen for three and a half seconds. This stylus is crazy! Is it good? A little more depth. I want a little more depth than that. So the Tab A, it comes in three different sizes. There's an eight inch, there's a 9.7 inch, which is the one I have, and there's a brand new one that's 10.1 inches, which if you're going to get one of these, uh, I might spring for that one instead of the one I got because it has slightly better resolution on it. All three of those tablets are using the S Pen technology, so I think these drawing demos that I have done are, are going to translate pretty well to any of those. And as a side note, the other tablet that I found that I thought looked really interesting is the Asus ZenPad. The new ZenPad 10 has a great screen and it comes with the digitizer pen and I've seen some reviews, but some of the reviews that I saw were showing the pen was a little flighty. This review of the 10 has palm rejection issues, and I saw another review of a different Zen pad, uh, the 8, and it talks about how the ten pen tip doesn't really line up well with the screen at all. So overall, I'm just kind of withholding judgment on those for now. The Tab A has a slot for the stylus built right into the side of it. This is really handy. When you pull it out of the tablet, it automatically opens Samsung's Notes software, which is, you know, kind of meh. In the settings, you can jump in and make sure that that doesn't open every time you pull the pen out. The only configuration of this tablet you can get has 16 gigs of storage. However, there is a micro SD card slot on the side, which means you can just jump onto Amazon and for 10 bucks get another 32 gigs that you can plug in there. And overall, the tablet itself feels really good. It's solid, it feels well made. But one thing that really jumped out to me is that I am used to a retina screen, whether it's on my phone or my iPad or even my laptop. This has a low res screen. I don't, low res is the wrong word. It has a standard definition screen, so you can see pixels. So that was something that really kind of jumped out to me early. Some of the other elements feel okay as well. You know, it's got a standard camera. There's nothing really special about it and same thing about the speakers they work okay they're not amazing sounding but you know, they're decent. Basically, it feels like an inexpensive version of an iPad because, spoiler alert, it is. 
The good news here is that the Z Pen itself doesn't feel cheap. In fact, the way that it draws feels pretty good. It's surprisingly accurate. Taking it through my standard drawing tests, I didn't detect any wobbles, there wasn't much lag, and the tip of the pen lined up with where I was drawing. And palm rejection is great. It just works really well. You forget that it's there. It's so good you forget you have palms. I mean, I know I have a palm. I have two. My point is, is that you never have to think, is my stylus close enough to the screen to engage the palm recognition so I can set my hand on it? There is one minor thing that I have with it that kind of goes along with palm rejection, and that is the buttons that are on the face of the bottom of the tablet. One is a back button, and the other one's a button that opens up the screens of all the apps that you have used recently. That button that opens the little menu thing is very easy to hit with your palm. So yeah, my palm was always hitting that and booting me out of my drawing program. Of course, this is an easy thing to solve just by flipping the tablet over so that it's on the left hand side instead of the right hand side. One thing that I mentioned in an earlier video is that the Z Pen itself is really skinny. It's kind of like drawing with a pretzel. Not that kind of pretzel, like one of the little ones. Yeah, that one. After like 20 minutes, my hand was like really cramping up. And that's where the Wacom Bamboo Smart Stylus comes in. The day I got the tablet, I went on Amazon and ordered the Wacom Bamboo Smart Stylus, which is basically the S Pen in a bigger holder thing. It's, a, it's an average pen size. It works so much better. And with my painful hand issue solved, I was off to the races. This little Wacom stylus feels pretty lightweight. It doesn't contain any batteries and it doesn't need recharging or anything. So it has all the benefits of the normal S Pen without the pretzel-like feel. No, the other pretzel. The S Pen and Bamboo Spark both support pressure sensitivity in apps. And is it good? I guess so. I mean, it's okay. That's a really lame answer. See, if I'm judging a Wacom tablet by comparing it to, say, a Huion tablet, I can plug them both in and draw in the same apps in the same operating system and have a good comparison. But since I'm jumping into Android, it's a lot harder to compare to, say, an iPad Pro because I'm dealing with a different OS. I'm dealing with different hardware. I'm dealing with different apps. And how do you take all these different variables and compare them? I just really have a kind of gut feeling to go off of, and, and generally, the gut feeling is pretty good. To equalize it a little bit, I've been using Autodesk Sketchbook, which is available on the Mac, the PC, Android, and iOS. So usually the pressure of the stylus feels pretty good. It's not all that different than the Apple Pencil, to be completely honest. There are the occasional odds and ends where if you draw a line too fast, it looks a little weird. Of course, an Apple Pencil or a Wacom stylus has tilt function to it. You're not gonna get any of this here. Since I don't use it in my drawing, I didn't miss it at all. It might be something that you missed and should be aware of. So overall, if I'm going to compare the Tab A to, say, the iPad Pro, I would say it's not as good, right? You're not getting as good of a screen. You're not getting as good of a camera or speakers or a uh, pencil. So it feels like the quality of this is, is like a step down from the iPad Pro, but that's only a step down. It's not like you're falling off the edge of a cliff in terms of quality. You're just taking a little bit step of a step back. And when you consider the fact that it's literally half the price, you know, that's that's a decent compromise to make. And if you're in the market for just a decent sketch pad that you can take anywhere and it's lightweight and works really well, this is a fantastic option. Just make sure that when you're getting one of these, it says with S Pen. They sell a Galaxy Tab A 9.7 that doesn't have the word with S Pen on it, and you might think, hey, I can save some money. You can, but it won't work. You can't just go out and buy an S Pen later and still expect it to work. Those two and a half words on the box are important. Again, if you want to see what tablets are compatible with this kind of pen technology, at the end of this video, I'm going to be throwing a link on there so you can go directly to the site and check it out, or of course, you could just jump down into the description right now and see for yourself. And that's all I got for today. I'm going to be checking out the software probably in another day or two, in a another video. I've got a lot of apps to kind of talk about. There's some good ones out there. And that's it. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Of course, you can always hit me up on Twitter. And if you find these videos useful, consider contributing on Patreon. That's all I got for today. Thanks, guys.